Hi everybody, I'm Dan Wells. I write horror, fantasy, and science fiction, and I talk about games on the internet. And it's kind of turning into Generational Game Week, uh, because today I want to talk about tribes. This is a very small, uh, very unique role-playing game from Steve Jackson Games that I first played in college. I uh, worked, I went to BYU, and I worked on their small press science fiction magazine called The Leading Edge. Really wonderful magazine. Uh, please, you know, support them if you can. Uh, it was, you know, I think hands down the best educational experience I had in college. And I also made a ton of really good friends that I still keep in touch with 25 years later. So hooray for that. Um, I guess 23 years later, 22, whatever. The point is... We used to play this all the time. One of my friends, an author you might have heard of named Brandon, uh, he was a night auditor at a hotel. And what that meant is that he basically had to man the desk, you know, in the graveyard shift. And if there were problems, he would solve them. And he would, you know, make sure that the money was all square and, and that people had the right amounts in the right places. And as long as those were done... He was pretty much free to do whatever he wanted, and he used that to write, but we also used that a lot to go and hang out in the lobby of that uh, hotel all night long playing games. And this is one of the ones we used to play, and I remember several sessions playing tribes with the old Leading Edge group. Anyway, what tribes is, is it is kind of a GMless social experiment role-playing game where you are all playing, you know, proto-humans, cavemen, Neanderthals, something like that. Uh, and what's really fascinating about it is that there isn't really a story. It's a game about survival, and it's a game about social politics. Um, everyone in the group, and you can play this with any number of people, um, there have been, you know, conventions where they have played this with 50 or, you know, 70 people all in a tribe. Um, they're all part of the same tribe. There's actually variants where you can do multiple tribes who are trying to, you know, hunt the same hunting grounds or maybe they fight each other or whatever. Uh, but the core game, the default setting, is that you're all in the same tribe and you are trying to survive. And what that basically comes down to is you need to find food, you need to reproduce, and you need to come up with laws. And that is where the game really gets fascinating. Let's get into it a little bit. Um, let's give, let's actually start with the gender caveat, okay? Um, because this is a game of, you know, that includes reproduction, gender does matter in it. Uh, that said, it doesn't matter a ton. Uh, the game does assume that uh, male characters will be larger and or stronger than female characters. And so if it comes to combat, which in my experience it rarely does, uh, males will get a bonus. Uh, the game also assumes that pregnancy is a toll on your physical health. And so uh, pregnant women are not allowed to hunt. Other than those two things, um, and you can argue whether those are fair assessments of, of human biology or not, uh, there really is no, there, there's no other mechanical function of gender at all in the game, aside from the fact that you need uh, a male and a female in order to reproduce, um, which is more of a sex thing than a gender thing. So where the game I almost said where the game makes up for that um, how the game balances this is letting you come up with your own laws and your own rules do you want to have a tribe that is wholly accepting of you know multiple gender identities then you can if you want to have a tribe that mandates you know not only marriage but sexual fidelity in marriage, you can. If you want to have a tribe where none of that matters, you can. You, as a group, 
establish what you want the rules to be. And that is where a lot of the fun and a lot of the, you know, interesting, enjoyable social aspects of this game come from. If that doesn't sound like the kind of thing that interests you, then obviously this game is not going to interest you. Uh, but I find it to be, in my experience, it's a lot of fun to to go through and answer these questions for yourselves and say, you know, in in the absence of any laws or strictures or even precedent, how are we going to structure this? Are we going to allow, you know, X or Y or Z thing? Are we going to be tolerant of all these other things? Are we going to encourage uh, all these other things? Um, and so, yes, there are two, two points in the game where, you know, biological sex or, or uh, social gender matter. Really, it's only biological sex. Um, other than that, everything is on the table to be changed or played with. And in fact, if your group wants to, like, get rid of the, the male combat bonus, you can. Like, you can do whatever you want. So anyway... Uh, let's dig into this. What you do in this game is you uh, start off by, you know, laying out the stuff. And there's some boards here that you can keep track of, um, you know, different hunting grounds and tables and things. There's counters that you can print out and cut out if you want to. Um, there's birth records. There's lots of things. We mostly just did this um, you know, back when we, we did it in college, we had these hunting tables printed out on a sheet, and then everything else we just, you know, marked with, with pen and paper. So, anyway, here. Uh, once you've got that and you've kind of figured out what you're going to do, are you going to do a single tribe, are you going to do multiple tribes, do you have a referee, or is everybody on equal footing, um, then you move into creating the tribe itself. In which case, every player gets to specialize. Are you going to be a hunter, or a gatherer, or a crafter? And each has a vital role in the society that makes them good at other things. Um, crafters, you can train new crafters over the course of the game. Hunters and gatherers, you can't. And so you've got to choose. If you have a society that focuses more on one or the other, that will change the way that you operate. Uh, gathering is much more reliable, but doesn't bring in as much food. Hunting is a little more volatile. It's likely that you won't find, you know, it's possible you won't find anything. It's possible that you might get injured while hunting. But on the other hand, when you do find some, it's a ton. And so there's a lot of choices to be made there. Crafters are able to uh, make baskets, which makes gathering easier. And they're able to make spearheads, which makes hunting easier. That is their main value to the tribe. So you don't want too many crafters because most of what they do is support the other forms of food gathering. Anyway, you have a chance to do that. You have a chance to make some tribal laws and then off you go. Uh, as you see on, the, uh, on these boards, there's four different areas. There's also two different seasons. Um, you know... The standard game takes place over the course of 20 years, and each year has two seasons. Year one, there's warm and cold. Year two, there's warm and cold, and so on. And your only goal, there's not a story, your only goal is to survive at the end and see, you know, who has, you know, achieved the most if your society has managed to survive and thrive, if there's more of you, uh, if you have children... All those kinds of questions. So, uh, you take turns, and each season, warm and cold, you get, th there's three turns. There's the work round, uh, which is when you can craft things, uh, and you can hunt and stuff like that. There's the food round, in which you have to spend the food you got in the work round to feed everybody, including, you know, the children and the other adults and, you know, the non-player characters in the tribe. And then there's the reproduction round, where you just roll to see if new children show up, depending on how you, as a group, have decided to do that. Um, and all of these things can be done with very little structure. 
uh, again, the the primary focus of the game is on developing a society and a culture. And so while the game will tell you, for example, hunters are better at hunting, but anyone can go hunting if they want to. There's no rules you have to follow that way. There's just kind of models of what will happen based on the choices that you make. So uh, you go through all of this. There's rules for hunting. If you hunt too much in a single environment, you can hunt it out. Uh, you can see from the board, and I'm not going to get into it uh, in super detail right now, but, um, you know, different areas are likely to give you different kinds and different quantities of food, which is kind of cool. Uh, you can hunt as a group. There's rules for gathering. There's rules for crafting. There's rules for training new crafters. And then there's children. And children not only need to be produced, they need to be guarded. It takes 12 years for a child to become an adult, at which point they are self-sufficient. Prior to that, it falls on the rest of the tribe to protect them and to feed them. And there are event tables. Uh, there are rules of you know how to guard children. Um, you know what happens if you hunters can't guard children at all. Uh, gatherers can, but they start to uh, you know if they if they guard try to guard too many they fall apart. Uh, crafters can only guard a certain number of children as well, and so maybe you get to the point where you have to designate one of the players purely as you know the nursery leader someone who's going to sit with those children and keep them safe because there are event tables you can roll on and maybe hyenas or whatever will show up and try to eat your kids and if they're not being guarded then that's bad news uh there's rules about how to move around uh there are and then you know there's rules of success of the tribe which is kind of your win condition at the end you know how many adults do you have how many children do you have all of this extra stuff. That's kind of the whole game. Um, it, there's a section here that talks about laws, but again, all of those laws are def decided by the players. And so there's no laws that you have to follow. You can decide entirely how your society is going to function within the models of making sure that everybody gets fed, which is ultimately your goal. There are optional rules about conflict if you're trying to intimidate or outright attack other players. But as it says somewhere in here, um, if it gets to the point where your characters are attacking each other, your tribe's already fallen apart. Uh, you need to do your best to avoid having to bully or intimidate or attack the other players as much as you can. And that's another rule that can be decided you know, in the game and say, well, you know, we want this to be a calm game. Please resolve your conflicts peacefully before you even start. And that can work great. Uh, there's notes on cannibalism. You can decide, again, that's one of the laws you can make for your society. Do we allow this or do we not allow this? Um, if you do allow it, you can get a lot of food, but it's gross. Um, there are alternate rules for strength, optional rules for a referee. The default setting is that the game has no game master, has no referee, everyone's on equal footing. And then, of course, there's the extra rules for having different tribes. And I've done this before, where, you know, you've got two tribes of, you know, 10, 15 people each, and they, you know, sometimes they will attack each other, sometimes they will set up trade with each other, and, uh, or they will try to come up with laws saying, well, we're going to have the Velt this year, and you can have the Velt next year and that alternates back and forth pretty well until one of the tribes is really starving and really wants to get into that veldt and they do and they've now broken the law and then the tribes have to decide well what are we going to do there's a lot of things that can happen it's a lot of fun tons of alternate rules here so that you can tweak and mess with this any way you want um so yeah this game is uh Basically, it's a PDF that you get on the Steve Jackson website for 10 or 15 bucks. I don't remember exactly how much it is. Uh, this is the second printing of it, the second edition, uh, which was codified in uh, 2000, although you know they, they renewed the copyright in 2017. I 
didn't realize that this was as recent as it was, because I played it in 98 and assumed it was a much older game. But uh, apparently it's from 98. Anyway, this is a really fun... If you've got a bunch of nerdy friends, this can be a riot as a late night party game. If you are at a convention with a bunch of nerdy friends and uh, are looking for a role-playing experience that can handle more than five or six people gracefully, Tribes is a really good option for that. Uh, like I said, I have played this in groups of up to 20 or even 30 people. And, uh, you know, it, it can take some time, depending on how long people agonize over their decisions going through two seasons, 20 years, uh, can be a long time. You can cut the game short, you can uh, speed the game up, there's a lot of different choices you can make, uh, but it's, it's, a, it's a lot of fun and it's really interesting to see how the societies develop and how the rules as laid out, how the model of consequence affects the kinds of societies that develop. Uh, one of the things that I like to do is to tweak those rules a bit. You know, if you remove all of the, uh, you know, the biological sex indications completely so that pregnant women can now hunt and uh, men are not automatically stronger than women, how does that change things? How does that uh, alter the society? Does it alter it at all? You know, there's, it, it's, it's half game and half social experiment. Uh, and with the right group, it can be a lot of fun. So anyway, uh, that is Tribes from Steve Jackson Games. Uh, and I think you will like it. And I uh, hope that you have a chance to give it a try. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this. I am Dan Wells, and you are awesome.